Hello folks, got an interesting drone accessory to share with you today. This is the Drone Mask 2 and I didn't try the original Drone Mask so I'm looking forward to checking this thing out. But this will effectively turn your standard flying into a, well in theory, into an FPV experience. So you put your phone into the front here and it comes with the cables necessary. You connect it to your controller as normal and using the standard flying app that you would use, in my case, the Fly app from DJI, you can actually experience that FPV flying. If like me, you are in the UK, then just remember you are required to have a spotter when engaging in FPV drone flying. And I'm gonna say from the get-go that I have never actually experienced full-on FPV drone flying before, so I can't explain how the Drone Mask 2 here compares to the full-on FPV experience. That said, I do have some experience in virtual reality. I have a VR headset that, you know, the family and I like to play about with at times. So if you guys are experienced in VR, then let me tell you, this is not like that, okay? I was kind of expecting something similar. It is very, very different. So what I am seeing here is effectively a flat screen. I can see it is my phone screen, okay? It is an enlarged image, of course, because of those lenses magnifying the image for me, but it still looks like a screen in front of my face. That said, the optics here are remarkably crisp and clear. I am surprised by that. I was expecting that some of the text wouldn't be readable with the telemetry and what have you, but that is not the case at all. And of course, that's really important because we need to be able to read that information. And the good news is I can. It's absolutely crystal clear. And there is no notable screen door effect either. I am using an iPhone 12, which is fairly modern, only a couple of years old. So it does have a very high screen resolution. If you are using perhaps an older smartphone with Drone Mask 2, then maybe the optics wouldn't be as clear as they are for me. But I am very impressed with the sharpness of the image. And in terms of the immersion, because it is more just like a larger screen in front of my face, I don't have the immersion I was expecting to get, but it is definitely more immersive than just looking down at the controller with my phone attached. And flying a drone full on FPV like this, it is definitely an interesting experience. And I think it will take some getting used to, but I can imagine it will be a lot of fun. However, you know, not everything in life is perfect. And there is one issue I do want to bring to your attention. First off, I've just been to the opticians, okay, just a week ago, and I was told that I have very good vision. I don't need glasses, so, you know, there shouldn't be any issues for me with using a product like this. The problem is, I seemingly have to sort of go cross-eyed in order to get that clear, crisp image. Now, my eyes sort of force me to do that anyway, but I'm a little bit concerned that it could cause a bit of eye strain, especially if you don't have strong vision. 10 to 15 minutes with this mask on is pretty much the most I can handle because my eyes will need a break after that. Now you can adjust the focal length and there's this little knob at the bottom. It says lock and unlock. If you put it into the unlock position, you can physically move the single large lens so that it is further away from the phone. And that does help a little bit if I have it extended to the maximum distance and it actually makes the image a little bit larger. But, you know, it, it is still needing that kind of cross eye technique in order to get that image where you want it. But of course, that could be down entirely to me. You know, I'm not exactly a big sample size, but if you have used either the original drone mask or the drone mask too, then please do share your experience with the optics down in the comments. But don't forget, you know, this is not a couple of stereoscopic images. This is a single image on your phone screen that the lens of the Drone Mask 2 is then sending to each eye individually and your eyes are combining it together. It is actually a really interesting design and I get what they're going for. I just feel like for me, it might take a little bit of getting used to. Now the headset itself, I have no complaints over. It is very comfortable. It has an adjustable elasticated strap, which goes around my head no problems. The headset itself is fairly light, even with my phone in the front of it. And even though it's a little bit chilly here in the UK today, the company has said that the mask is designed with a fabric that means that you shouldn't get too hot when wearing this, even in the warmer summer months. And the padding itself that rests against your face is also very comfortable, so no complaints there from me. There is a little bit of light bleed, which perhaps on a brighter day could prove to be an issue, but right now isn't really a problem either. And this is pretty neat. On either side, you get these little blackout curtains where you can poke your fingers through if you need to fiddle about with anything on the touchscreen of your phone. And then when you are not doing that, yeah, it keeps the light out. This wasn't actually available, I don't believe, on the original Drone Mask. So this is a new feature for Drone Mask 2, which is 
let's be honest, kind of useful so that you can still control things. And speaking of improvements over the original drone mask, also included here are the cables you are going to need. So for me, I am using the lightning cable, which is a longer cable than the one that DJI provided with my drone. And this is given by Drone Mask 2. They also give you the USB-C to USB-C cable if you are using an Android device and an adapter as well for micro USB. If, for example, your drone controller does not have USB-C but has micro USB, then you have that as well. And that's the good thing about this. This isn't limited to, t uh, to DJI drones. I know that that's what a lot of you on my channel are flying, but you can use this pretty much with any drone as long as it is a drone where the controller connects to the phone for that effort. FPV view. So yes, that does mean if you are flying the Mini 3 Pro with the screen controller, then that wouldn't be compatible here. But the Mini 3 Pro with the standard RC controller would be. Another thing to consider is that these sorts of drones, such as the Mini 2 and the Mini 3 Pro, they weren't designed with FPV flying in mind which means they don't have the speed, they don't have the urgency. You have to be careful, of course, especially with the Mini 2 due to its lack of obstacle avoidance. But honestly, I suspect something such as the Drone Mass 2 here, it's a great middle ground, okay, between standard drone flying and your full-on FPV flying. Now, I have always been intrigued by FPV drones. I just have no technical know-how to build them myself, and I haven't really been able to justify the cost of purchasing the pre-built models from DJI, such as the FPV drone or the DJI Avata. And the truth is the drones that I do fly have not been designed with full-on FPV in mind, so this isn't going to be the same type of experience, okay? We are not gonna have the same sort of speed or urgency with a drone such as the Mini 2 as you are going to get with the Avata, okay? It's just not pretending to even be in that same sort of category. But I do think that Drone Mass 2 can serve as an introduction to the concept. And it is super convenient to set up as well. You just open the app that you are flying with as you normally would. You just pop your phone into the mask, make sure that you have the longer cable connected uh, from the phone to the controller, and then just put the headset on, you are good to go. Oh, and a quick note about the RC controller from DJI. In the phone holder section, that is where the antenna is stored. So you will still need to keep that extended in order to make sure you have the best range, even though it's not gonna be holding your phone in place. I've popped my hat on because it's getting a little bit cold now this evening. I've got to say, as I started to get used to this draw mask, it did become a lot of fun. As I say, it was a little bit strange at first because you kind of have to, you know, go cross-eyed in order to get the image to sort of sync up with your vision, which is a little bit weird. But I don't know whether it's your eyes or the lens or whatever it is, sort of forces you to do that. So it's not difficult, but it can just take, as I say, a little bit of getting used to. Will I be using this every time I bring my drone out to fly? No, I won't be. But will it satisfy the FPV itch until perhaps something more affordable, that is full FPV, becomes available for me? I think it will. And whizzing around the fields as I was, you know, I was having a blast with that. It really was enjoyable. But as always, folks, please do share your own experiences down in the comments, especially if you have actually first-hand used either the original drone mask or this drone mask too. How did you find that? Please do let us know. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.